now available. Paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage when the goddess next door steps in a squared circle with the beast from the box of this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the main event. Paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Hi everyone, it's your boy Sean, and I'm here with another comic review video. Now, I've been following Josh Howard's T-Bird and Throttle for the last two or three years now, and I really love this story so much that when Josh did the, the Indiegogo for the third issue of T-Bird and Throttle, I went back and bought all of the paper copies because I believe that this comic is going to be a future classic, and this story is so great, I wanted to have it in paper form so I could hold it in my hands. And I just got my copy of T-Bird and Throttle number three and the back issues from zero, one, and two in the mail this week. So after reading that third issue, all I can tell you is after reading this awesome, incredible third issue, I've got my money ready to put down on issue number four and the conclusion. Now, T-Bird and Throttle number three is the third issue of this awesome miniseries, and it just does not disappoint. Now, if we look at the cover, we see um, Mitch's daughter, Emily, looking like she's getting ready to suit up for action, and that's what she does in this story. Now, this first issue starts out with a awesome shot at your SJWs and your woke types, and it makes a brilliant commentary on how our media really does fuel a lot of this fire. If you look at the first couple of pages, it shows us these SJWs and these woke types and how they just are just caught up in this emotional frenzy without any sort of objectivity. And then we get a shot of Emily and her friend, and they're looking at all of this and looking at it really from a really objective perspective. And that's what I like about Josh in, in the start of the story is that he shows some balance as related to how he presents things. And he presents us with how you're supposed to really present social commentary in a comic book story. Because and when you're doing comics and you're doing social commentary, you want to do your commentary between the lines. And Josh does an amazing job of giving us that commentary between the lines in just these first two pages. And as we go on, we, we learn a lot more about Emily's friend Kat, that she is the granddaughter of a legendary superhero. And this is one of the things that leads to her going into action as the second throttle. So I love the way everything just really sets up here, how we have Josh really showing us how legacy heroes really work, how generations pass from one to the other, and what motivates people to be heroes, how they want to help out others, and Emily coming out here and wanting to be a hero like her father, and learning from Kat, who learns to be, who's about here being a hero, just like her grandfather. So they want to do what is right, and again, that comes from the values that both of them learned from their parents, and that's something that people really don't understand about superheroes these days is that people become heroes because of things that they learn from their parents, the values that they learn, and they want to continue passing on, doing, learning how to do good and what is right from what they've learned from their parents. So that's something I really love seeing here in that first couple of pages is seeing that everything as related to legacy. It really contrasts everything from what I've seen. Like if you read issue number two and you see the so-called hero that T-Bird is fighting in the second issue, the guys who are becoming heroes, they become heroes for a completely different set of reasons. And you just look at Emily and you look at Kat and look at their motivations, and it, it really fits right in line with what motivates pe a lot of people to become heroes because they have these values that they learn from one generation to the next. So Josh really did an amazing job there in between the lines with the nuances of that part of the story as related to legacy heroes and passing down heroes from generation to generation. And I really liked seeing that. It was just, that was a beautiful, beautiful part of the story and one of the great parts of this um, third issue. Now, 
This third issue continues to give us more into the mystery of T-Bird and the engine. And this part of the story is really, really has a lot of, it's, it's the Hitchcockian stuff really, really starts to develop deeper into the story. And I really liked how everything is just really so well put together on this mystery of T-Bird and the engine and somebody trying to destroy Mitch's reputation. And as we get more questions answered as related to the engine, as related to this person who was out to get your Mitch Maddox and destroy his reputation, we get, as, as we get more questions answered from the first three issues, we get more, que we, we wind up asking more questions. And that's what a really good mystery does. It delves deeper into the mystery and as us asking more questions. And as we see Mitch returning from Earth, we get more questions. We have more questions to ask. And these questions, again, have us asking more questions that have us anticipating the next issue. And that's what a good writer does is... As they're delving and developing their mystery, what they want to do is, as they answer one series of questions, we wind up asking more questions, and that's what drives us deeper into the story and has us learning more. So the more I would read, you know, this issue, the more I was anticipating getting that fourth issue. And Josh really, I mean, he has just done an amazing job on this comic. I mean, the mystery is just one of the best I have seen. I mean, I, the last time I saw a mystery this good, it was like in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the only thing I can say about Josh's writing here is that he has really given us the superhero version of an Alfred Hitchcock mystery. I mean, just when you think the story is going to go one way, it winds up going another way. And I just don't, as the book is so good, that I just don't want to, uh, you know, spoil everything because you have to really go out here and read this for yourself because this book is just, it's just so good that I just don't want to spoil it for those out there and I don't want to, don't want to ruin it for people out there. I mean, there's just so much going on and Josh just, just does an amazing job of, I mean, he just crafts a incredible story here. I mean, and... The story is just, it's so compelling. It's just not funny. I mean, when I got this book in the mail on Wednesday night, I mean, I practically, I read it in 30 minutes and I was, I wanted more. I mean, it was just like when I was out here in high school, I remember being 14, 15 years old, about 30 years ago, and I would go to the, to the newsstand in Times Square and go get my comics. And this is just like, the comics I used to buy back then. I mean, back then, when I would sit there, I would go through a comic in about 30, 45 minutes in the lunchroom, and I was eager to get the next issue. And this comic has me so eager to get that next issue, I'm just counting down the days until I can put in my pledge for number four, and I'm definitely, again, going to want to get that paper copy because this comic series is so good that... You don't want to just get some digital copies and scroll through it on your computer. No, you want to hold this comic in your hand and you want to have this comic in your hands. I mean, this is this is the type of comic where you just want to sit there and read this comic and you want to read it again and again because each time you read it, something new comes out at you. Josh, he has so much going on in the art and in the story. I mean, there's so many little stories going on behind the scenes in this story. There's so many layers in this story that there's so much going on that you just, you can't sit there and just read it in one sitting and then just go on with about your business. You will sit there and you will read this again and again and something else is going to come out at you because Josh has just put so much into the story, so many layers, so much complexity. And I just don't want, again, I love this comic book so much that I don't want to give anything away to anybody. Now, I'll, all I'll tell you is that this issue, it ends on a cliffhanger 
And that cliffhanger uh, is something that is going to really motivate you to count down those days until Josh launches the next Indiegogo and you can go get that fourth issue and pick up the next, uh, the previous three to four issues. And I have to say that th this book is the best book of, one of the best books of 2020. And that's, that's really saying something because I, again, I believe this series is going to be a classic on the level of books like your what what they call Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, Lonely Place of Dying, The Phoenix Saga. That's what I believe T-Bird and Throttle is going to be. I mean, this book it really takes comic storytelling to another level. It takes art to another level. I mean, Josh has always had a distinct style, but his storytelling here takes it to another level. And this book, I believe, is going to be a future classic. And I, I believe I'm holding a classic in my hands. And I've held a lot of comics in my hand. I mean, I bought the first appearance of War Machine from a grocery store back in 1992. And I didn't even think anything of it back then. And now that book, I'm looking at it and it's going through the roof. And that was a book that I practically beat up and read a hundred times. And this is the same type of book where... You, people are going to buy it, read it, beat it up, and they're not going to see. They're not going to understand that you were a part of history, and you were a part of a classic. You were in an era where you were reading a classic and holding a classic in your hands, and that's what I see with this T Bird and Throttle series is a future classic. I mean, this story, again, it takes comic book storytelling to another level. I mean, we, I haven't seen characters this rich and multidimensional since the days of Chris Claremont with the X-Men or Marv Wolfman with the new Teen Titans or David Michelini when he was writing Avengers and Iron Man and Spider-Man back in the 70s and the 80s. I mean, this story really gives us what comic fans have been have been wanting for years, and it really does a brilliant job of making that commentary about the modern comic book industry and all of the social justice narratives. This third issue really does a really brilliant job of that, and, but the whole overall series really shows, again, Josh's love for comics, his passion for comics, and how he has just literally taken all of the things that are going on in the comic book world today and the world today and made a brilliant commentary about the world of superheroes, what it means to be a hero, and what really is important. But I'll leave one clue about this. Gruesome is in this issue, and what he does just ain't pretty, and it ties into the cliffhanger. So, Again, you definitely want to get this one. This is a comic I highly recommend you pick up, whether it be in Josh's upcoming Indiegogo for the fourth issue, or you can pick up back issues on his website. Or if you want to wait, you can head over to Alterna Comics. When they, when they launch the first three issues, they're going to be launching them in, on their company, and they're going to do a newsprint version, so you can wait to get those. But I wanted to get the ones from Josh himself because, again, I, I love this story. Uh, I think it's an awesome story, and I wanted to have the paper copies to hold in my hand because I believe that this story is going to be a future classic, and it's, it's one of the best comic series to come out of the 21st century. And I highly recommend you get your copies of T-Bird and Throttle, whether you get it from Josh's site, um, and I'll leave a link to his site, or you head over to his in upcoming Indiegogo for issue number four, or you head over to Alterna Comics and your local comic shop to get the back issues, which will have completely different covers than these. And But you're just going to get this story because this story is a masterpiece. Now, if you want to pick up my SJS Direct publications like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Spinsterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the links to Amazon.com. 
There you can find all of my books in paperback and Kindle format. And if you want to see me go out here and be able to put in pledges for Indiegogo's like Josh's for T-Bird and Throttle and pick up more awesome comics to review, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available on paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs with the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed all-new John Haynes series adventure. It's the regular and variant editions of John Haynes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com.